The Lord be with you. I have to say it's great to be back. Thanks for, um, uh, during my two weeks of sitting home with COVID very lightly, let me remind you, uh, thank you for your prayers, for your concern for all of those things. Vaughn and I both tested positive a couple of weeks ago. She had no symptoms whatsoever. Skated through the whole thing, giving me grief because I wasn't feeling well. And I had it very lightly according to the standards uh, that people get it. So uh, thanks be to God for that. We know that in the state our, our numbers are on the rise, so we just continue to do the things that God has given us. Wash our hands, distance a little bit, just be wise about the things that we do. Most importantly, we put our trust and our hope in our Savior. And today as we gather, Pastor Sutton has done such a great job laying the groundwork for the epistle reading for today. So we'll review just a little bit what he said, and then that that just flows so nicely into what St. Paul reminds us to do. Put off the old self. All those things that would pull us into the world, into sin and death and worry and fear, and live in in the identity that Christ has given to us. For all of you watching online, thanks be to God for you. We pray that you would follow along. The bulletin is on the website, so you can follow the bulletin. Thanks for being here and enjoying and hearing God's gifts of his forgiveness of sins and the identity he's given to us. Thanks for watching along. With that, as we gather today, we begin with our first hymn. today divine service setting four is printed in your bulletins please stand in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit our help is in the name of the lord if you O lord kept a record of sins O lord who could stand but with you there is forgiveness therefore you are Since we are gathered here to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, 
and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His Son to die, for his, to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Things that we have heard and known, that our fathers have told us. Say to my soul, I am your salvation. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. Oh
The Lord be with you. We pray together the collect of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, of your bountiful goodness, keep us from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish whatever you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis 28, verses 10 through 17. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Please read along with me the catechetical review found in your bulletin. The Ten Commandments. The Sixth Commandment. You shall not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. And husband and wife love and honor each other. The epistle for today is from Ephesians 4, verses 17 through 31. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of hearts. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have learned about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehoods, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but whom you are sealed for the day of redemption." Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all the malice. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we sing together the gospel. Alleluia.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Getting into a boat, Jesus crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you might know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God who had given such authority to men. This is the gospel of our Lord. We make the bold confession of our Christian faith in the, Cre- in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. I would invite all of our children to please come forward. Good morning. Great to see you all this morning as we're here. Let's talk about some people that that serve us, some people that help us out. If you saw a policeman on the street, what would he be wearing? Uh, Black and blue. Black and blue. Usually those are the colors that an officer might wear. Yeah. What would he have on so that you knew he was a police officer? A badge, something that says his name or, or uh, where, what he belongs to. You'd know so he's official. What else would he be wearing? Shoes. Yeah, he'd have shoes on. He might have a, a hat on too that would kind of identify him as a policeman, right? How about a fireman? What would a fireman wear? A red suit and super strong pants. Yeah. What else would a fireman wear? Yeah, he has a, this big hat that helps the water stay off and get off his collar. And he's got some really tough clothes, so if he does get in the fire, it protects him, right? Well, we know what a policeman would wear. We know what a fireman would wear. When we talk about being children of God, how do we dress? Nice, right? We wear our best when we come to worship. Yeah, that's right. Paul says something a little bit different. He says, when we are children of God, we should put on Christ. Yeah, that's a great question. How do we put on Christ? Do we we try to crawl into his body and wear that over us? Does that work? Now, that wouldn't work very well, would it? How do we put on Christ? Well, we don't baptize ourselves, but we, you're right on track. We live in our baptism. 
Now, what, what does that mean, live in our baptism? Should we live in the bathtub and play in the water all the time? Is that what it means? Uh, yeah, we'd get all, cri- all shriveled up, wouldn't we? Living in our baptism, putting on Christ, means this. We help people. We love people. We pray for people. Do you guys pray for people when you pray your prayers? Pray for mom and dad and family and grandpa and grandma and maybe some people that are sick and different things? Yep, thank you. And see, that living, when we pray for people, that is putting on Christ. How about um, if you see somebody outside and they're raking their leaves and they, they're not doing a very good job, what do you think we should do? We could, go help them. could we go help them? That's putting on Christ. When we see our neighbor who's in need and we go over there and help them, that's putting on Christ. How about if your brother or sister is doing their homework and they're really struggling, what could you do? Uh, you could help. You could help. Because you, you've maybe done that before, especially you who are older helping a little sister with something you've already learned. And we could help them work through that. See, all of those things is putting on Christ. All of those things are living the way that Christ would have us live in his forgiveness and then also love our neighbor. Now, there's one more thing we haven't talked about yet. Living in Christ, putting on Christ means this. Please forgive me. Can you say that with me? Please forgive me. You see, that's what it means to put on Christ. It means that when we hurt somebody, we say to them, please forgive me. It means when we come here on Sunday morning and we're standing here before our Lord, what is it that we say right away at the beginning? Please forgive me. And what's he do? God forgives us because of Jesus on the cross. You see, when, Jesus, when Paul says, live, when Paul says, put on Christ, he's really saying to do this. Take your finger and do this. Receive the sign of the cross, both upon the forehead and upon the heart, as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. You see, that happened at your baptism. The pastor made the sign of the cross on your forehead and your heart, and all of a sudden you were putting on Christ, living in this great faith that God has given to us. Well, let's go to our Lord in prayer, shall we? Dear Jesus, please forgive us. Please help us always to love you and always to put on Christ. In your name, amen. All right. Thanks, guys, for coming up here. And we continue with our next hymn.
name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you that you have again clothed us in your holiness and in your righteousness. Help us to live in that great gift, serving you and loving our neighbors. Strengthen us now in the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, dear saints, over the course of the last three weeks, you couldn't have been in better hands. Pastor Anderson pointing us to this clothing that Christ clothes us with, the wedding garments. And for the last two weeks, as Pastor Sutton has preached, he has laid the groundwork for the epistle reading for today, picking up a couple of things that we'll unpack just a little bit more today. We pick up on these words from St. Paul in the epistle reading for today, Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through its deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Two weeks ago, Pastor Sutton used this great phrase that he unpacked through that sermon, the theology of life. Everybody has one. Everybody has that that theology of life, and you might not even recognize it, but it is how you make decisions and why you make the decisions you make. The real question with the theology of life, though, is who's at the center of that theology of life? Is it you, or is it God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? There is a very technical Latin phrase for living in this theology of life when we are at the center. The word is omnifolescesis. That's way too hard to say. Here's the English translation. Focusing on your belly button. It's a real thing. Have you ever noticed when a little kid discovers their belly button? They're looking down and they're poking and they're digging and they're flipping and they're just obsessed with this little belly button that they have. Well, when we live that way, when we live curved in on ourselves, we are the center of our own universe, the center of our own world. And everything we do is driven by the fact that we are at the center. Now, when we talk about the theology of life, it's really interesting if we take the word apart. Theos means God, and ology means the study of, kind of like biology. So if theos means the the study of God, and ology is the study of that, if I'm at the center of my own universe, who is God? I am. If I'm the center of my own universe, if every decision is made and guided and directed by me, I am taking the role of God. A few years ago, I visited a a friend of mine. He invited me over to his house. His office was in his basement. And as I walked into his office, it it was very well set up and beautiful. But when I walked in, I was immediately drawn to the back wall. And as I looked at the back wall, it was completely full of plaques, and trophies, and all kinds of accolades given to this man for his years of service. And as I was standing there in awe of all of these awards that had been given to him, he walked up to me, his arms crossed, he kind of bumped me on the shoulder, and he said, that's my I love me wall. Who do you suppose is at the center of his universe? He is. All of the work, all of the accomplishments, all the things that he had done is there for him to see. And the problem with that is, as we continue to go down that path, if we continue to go down the path with me at the center of things, it reminds us very clearly of what James says. Desire, when it conceives, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it's fully grown, gives birth to death. In other words, sin leads to more sin, which ultimately leads to damnation. You see, in this man's world, he worked hard, he was successful, he found that fed his ego, so he worked even more 
hard. He continued to do these things, patting himself on the back, putting his accomplishments on the wall, and it continued to foster him living in as his own God, continuing to do the things that he wanted to do that would give him the results that he wanted. It's an endless, deadly cycle. Kind of like a dog. Have you ever seen a dog chasing his tail? Just runs continually in the circle doing those things? When we are our own God, when we are at the center of our theology of life, that's exactly what happens. We continue to chase all of these things that only lead to sin and death. Two things always follow when I am at the center of my own theology of life. The first is we always see God as our enemy. We always see God as the one who's trying to control me, trying to change me, trying to make me conform to what he says, trying to take away the things that I love. When we hear God's words and commands and the law focusing on us, all we see is God being a tyrant. That's what happens When the position of God is already filled by me. When I am at the center of my theology of life. When I'm at the center of my own universe, my theology, and anyone else who wants to be in that position, I would look at as my enemy. Whenever I'm at the center of my own world, the center of my theology, focusing in on my own belly button, I will always believe that God only wants to cause me harm. And that he never wants to give me his good gifts. The second thing that happens when I'm at the center of my own theology of life is all of the things that I can't control, all of the things of the world that happen that I have no control over whatsoever, they begin to cause me anxiety and fear. And all of these things of the world that are going on that I can't control them begin to cause panic and anxiety and an overwhelming sense that I'm not in control anymore. How would you do over the last um, half a year if your theology of life had you at the center? COVID coming in, completely changing the way that our world is functioning. The closing of the economy and what is that going to mean to the bottom line at the end of this year and into the future? And what will it mean if my candidate doesn't get elected and we go into the next political years? We have no control over those things. And if I'm at the center of my universe, that scares us to the point where we often can't function. When I'm belly button gazing, life is always a fight. When I'm at the center of the world, I'm fighting those who want to control me, fighting my fear, fighting my anxiety, fighting all of those things that are out of my control. That's not what Christ wants for us. Paul has a much simpler solution. Paul simply says this, Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through its deceitful desires. I would say it even more simply. Live in your baptism, dear saints. Live in who Christ has created you to be. There at that font with the, wa- with the hand of the pastor and the water and the word in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God has claimed you as his own. And now, God the Father who has created you, God the Son who has redeemed you through his death on the cross, God the Holy Spirit who continues to guide you to love God and love neighbors, is now at the center of your theology of life. And now God is leading and guiding and directing your decisions so that you might see God, your Father, as a gracious God who has forgiven all of your sins. You might see the work of the Holy Spirit as the one who guides you and continues to help you love your neighbor. And to live in a way of life that reflects God's great goodness and joy in the forgiveness of sins. That image that St. Paul picks up on, putting off the old self and putting on, that starts all the way back in the Garden of Eden. But remember, it doesn't ever start with us. Adam and Eve did what they shouldn't have done. They listened to another voice. 
They didn't listen to God. They believed, or at least they doubted God's promises. They ate, they sinned, and they would die because of that. In the midst of all of that, as they now are recognizing what they've done and their sin that's come into themselves and the world, they tried to cover themselves up. The beautiful bodies that God created, they were covering with fig leaves. And God comes to them with a garden with something more permanent. Skins, animal skins, to cover their shame and nakedness. But the cost of those skins was the cost of a life. The shedding of blood. Right there in the Garden of Eden, as God comes to Adam and Eve to cover them in his image, they are covered in a reminder that blood has to be shed for the forgiveness of sins. Right there in the Garden is the promise. Right there in the garden, God does the covering. God does the working. He covers them. And years later, there on the cross, Christ would shed his blood once and for all for Adam and Eve. And for you and I, he would cover this this original sin and the sins that we do with his holiness and restore us to the image of God that was broken when sin came into the world. When God looks at us now, In the waters of baptism, he doesn't see our sins. He sees holy. He sees Jesus covering us. He sees all of our sins have been paid for on the cross by Christ. And when God our Father looks at us now, he sees us restored just like Adam and Eve before sin came into the world. God, in his great love, continues to cover us to give His his holiness to us, that we might live that way. Not as the center of our own universe, but now living as a way to reflect Christ and His goodness to those around us. A friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine, Pastor Tim Reinerson, he's the pastor at Peace Lutheran in Brookings. He and his wife adopted two kids. And they were both adopted as infants, and when their first daughter, Sarah, when, when she was adopted, right after that, as a good Lutheran pastor, they scheduled the baptism. And on that Sunday morning, as they were standing there, Pastor Reinerson was holding Sarah, and he leaned over the water, and he was pouring the water on her head in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Sarah, as she was there in his arms, and when he leaned over his, his cross, was there above her, and Sarah reached up, and she grabbed that cross around his neck, and she would not let go. That's the image of Christ. That's our life in Christ. That's putting off the old self by the gift of the Holy Spirit, and grabbing the cross of Christ and holding for every day of our lives. Luther tells us when we get up in the morning, we should make the sign of the cross, say the Ten Commandments, pray the Lord's Prayer, and go joyfully to our work. You see, he starts with who we are. Putting off the old self every morning, putting that away and remembering that our Lord has made us his own in the waters of baptism. Forgiven our sins, given us his spirit, and guides and directs you today in all of the things that you do. Protecting you, forgiving you, loving you, and giving you His Spirit so that you, dear child of God, may live as this new creation and shine forth in a dark and dying world, loving your neighbor and letting them see the peace that you live in as a child of God. Put off the old self, which is code for remember your baptism. Live in the gifts that God has given to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as we come to our Savior in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given your church the authority on earth to forgive sins. Grant that we might always rejoice to receive the forgiveness announced 
and delivered by those men who have been called and ordained to serve in Christ's stead and by his command. And having been forgiven, give us hearts that are quick to forgive others. We pray today, dear Father, you would continue to protect your church. Bless Matthew, our synod president, Scott, our district president, John, our circuit visitor, Randy, our pastor in Christ, and Dennis, our vicar. Continue to bless the ministries at Divine Shepherd, Trinity Lutheran in Balfouche, and Evergreen Lutheran in Pine Ridge. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, our Savior, sent forth his church to the ends of the earth to proclaim the good news of salvation in him. Continue to send workers into the vineyard and give us willing and generous hearts to support the preaching of your word in our community and throughout our world. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, you bless Jacob with offspring as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give comfort to those who long for children but are unable to conceive. May they find in the church a family to love and cherish. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you rescued us from our fallen condition and adopted us as your own dear children. Guide those who are seeking to adopt children of their own that they might be a model of your love and give them patience and endurance as they work through the adoption process. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we ask that you would continue to watch over all of those who are struggling and suffering. We pray, Father, especially that you would uh, watch over your country and give us wisdom as we elect new people to serve us. We pray, dear Father, that at the center of those we choose would be a culture of peace and a culture of life. We ask, Father, that you would be with all of those who have authority, both in the country and the world. Renew their diligence, that they would use their offices to serve their fellow citizens with justice and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, as the paralytic was brought to you, we also bring before you the prayers of all of those suffering in any physical and mental anguish. We pray, Father, especially that you would uphold Walt and Mary, Ron and Judy, Derek and Alexis. We ask that you would be with Jeff, Kelly and his family, Steve and Yvonne, Jacob and Carrie. Uphold Claude and Matt, Wade and Jody. Be with Nancy and Chris, Devana, Amanda, Deb, Connie and Faith. Uphold Colleen and Erica and all of those with concerns. According to your will, grant them healing in this life and give them faithful friends who will proclaim to them the forgiveness of sins so that when they face trials of life, they are confident in your love for them. Lord, in your mercy. Father, how awesome is this place, O God, where we receive the gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation given to us in the holy supper of your Son's very body and blood. Fill us with his life and love that we would return to our homes in joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Whatever else we need or would be good for us, we entrust to your bountiful providence. For you live and reign with the Son and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated as we receive the offering.
Please stand as we continue at the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks to you, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruit of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do as often as ye eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us this morning. All kinds of things going on now as we get into fall in full swing. Today at 4 o'clock at Blessed Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Sturgis, they are burning their mortgage. We have prayed for this day for a long time. This small congregation has come to the end of that borrowed money. They are burning the mortgage today at 4 o'clock. They invite you to join them for the service at 4 and then the barbecue afterwards. So 4 o'clock today, we give our Lord thanks. He is so faithful to us and has gotten to this, gotten this congregation to the point where they're debt free. This coming Saturday, the 24th, Trunk or Treat. Uh, if you'd like to donate candy, there's a bin in the back over there by uh, the secretary's office. You can put that in there. If you'd like to make something to have a trunk or, if you will, something there for our kids, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, it will be outside. So dress appropriately for the weather this coming Saturday. And then also, uh, the LWML Fall Retreat is this Saturday on the 24th. Kathy, you want to say anything about that? to 3 this Saturday right here. Very good. If you're interested, see Kathy, text her, let her know you'll be here as well. We are coming up to some great festivals for the next two weeks. Next Sunday, the 25th, is a little bit early, but we celebrate the Reformation, remembering how Luther drove us back to God's Word alone. 
through the Holy Spirit alone, by faith alone, so that we see Jesus and cling to him alone as our theology of life. So next Sunday, we celebrate the Reformation. Next Sunday afternoon at 4.30, Divine Shepherd has been privileged over the last number of years to host the circuit Reformation worship. So 4.30, next Sunday afternoon right here, the circuit is gathering here. Uh, Pastor Tom Brown, a new pastor to our circuit. He was formerly in Mitchell. He's now in Spearfish. He is going to be preaching. Vicar will be doing the liturgy. Pastor John Fries, our circuit visitor, he's going to be helping, and I'll be the celebrant for the Lord's Supper. So 4.30, worship service, and then uh, pie and goodies and all of those things after that in the back. So keep that in mind as well. I've had a few ask me about the harvest dinner at the council meeting the other night. We decided on uh, the uh, 11, uh, excuse me, the 14th of November will be the harvest dinner, and it will be different than it has been, but it will continue to go on. We are going to streamline the menu. We are going to only serve roasted turkeys, so we're looking for about 20 of you to make turkeys, and we'll serve mashed potatoes, gravy, corn, and pumpkin pie for dessert. That's the entire menu. And then we'll package it, and we'll meet people outside, and we'll do a drive through And then we'll put a devotion and some things pointing them back to the hope and promise we have in Christ. So uh, it should be, we should be able to do this without any trouble. You, are, you have this down so well, the harvest dinner, that it won't be any problem for us at all. We pray for a decent day so that those who are serving outside don't freeze. Any other announcements? Please, Ruth. Sunday school has started, folks. We have had a lot of kids here today. We've got Sunday school right after the service. Um, we are welcoming all the kids that can come. We've got lots of things prepared, so come on for Sunday school. Very good. Sunday school this morning, Sunday school on Wednesday night, also during the harvest dinner, supper at 5.30, uh, teaching from... 6 to 7 for Sunday school, for confirmation, adult Bible study, and then worship at 7.15. And then also uh, this morning as we gather, we're starting a new Bible study. We've, uh, uh, we're taking a little bit of break from the minor prophets. Vicar will be leading us this morning. How many of you know that there's a large catechism? Yeah, the, the large catechism actually came first. Luther wrote that, and out of the large catechism came the small catechism. So... Because a vicar is spending a lot of time right now studying the confessions, the large catechism and different things, I thought it would be a good opportunity for him to teach us as well. So that will be back in the, in the fellowship hall. Join us for that, and we'll do our best to get better sound during the live stream as well so that you who are watching can hear also. Go in his peace. Thanks.